So I, I, I wonder. Let's get KJ Wright, who's played for this team, played for this coach, to jump in, and we'll talk it out a little bit here on Willard and Dibs 95-7 The Game. Good morning, KJ. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Doing well, man. Well, I'm not doing good here in appetizer game and not being close. What, what are we doing here? Yeah, right? I, I, what, what's this all about? This is supposed to be a rivalry game, and the NFL is basically like, ah, whatever. This is going to be a purdy party. Uh, we'll see. If you were on the Seahawks, how would you take the way that this game is being discussed? I mean, as a player, you hear the disrespect. You hear the noise. You hear the outside world saying you can't do this. This team heard that they would be 32 um, before the season started, they heard all that noise. And so I do believe that with Coach Carroll, he's been here. He's done that. He has got to find a way to get these guys' mind right, first of all. And secondly, when you look at this roster on San Francisco, it is loaded. Let's be clearly transparent with that. But where can we attack this defense? How can we attack this rookie quarterback? In our first two, in our first two matchups, we were disastrous running the football. And so I know that San Fran on paper is a really good team. But I do know Coach Carroll, who's done and seen a lot of football. So I'm looking forward to him finding a way to be creative. And what is that way, KJ, in terms of how you can get to the 49ers? Other than trying to pressurize and heat up the rookie quarterback, what can Seattle do offensively to try to put this Niner defense on its heels? I mean, we look at our first two matchups. In the first game, we ran the ball 14 times. Second game, we ran the ball 14 times. That is far from Coach Carroll's philosophy. And what I what I saw what we did in those games that we got away from the run game, we didn't try to keep attacking this San Francisco defense. When you look at you guys, Jesus of linemen, you guys are in track stances, rushing the quarterback on the way to the run. And so we got to find a way to stay committed to it. we find, got to find a way to get Kenneth Walker going. If he does not get 20 to 25 carries, it's going to be a long day for the Seahawks. And so it may be ugly early on in the game, the defense may stop them, but I need to see the Seattle Seahawks defense to find a way to create turnovers. I need to find us a way to get three and out. And so both sides have got to play hand-in-hand to, with each other. And so if they come up with that same game plan like they did in those first two games, it's going to unfortunately be another loss. K.J. Wright is with us here on Willard and Dibs. K.J., you've mentioned Pete Carroll. You played for the man. I need you to translate this for me. Take a listen to what he said in front of the media yesterday getting ready for this game. So sunk into the, the being Lions fans, man. And we, we love the Lions. Uh, Coach Campbell did a great job with his crew, and they played a fantastic football game to, to get the win, to give us the chance. So we're going to try to do something with it. Unfortunately, we're playing <laughs> the Niners, and they're loaded. And they're loaded and healthy and on a roll and about as hot as you could possibly get. And uh, doing it in a really commanding fashion, too, you know, with the young quarterback who's doing so well, just kind of, we buck the odds, you know, that everybody would think you could do that, and uh, everybody in the media, anyway. Um, um, we'll see how we how we you know, get our guys back for this weekend. It's coming up quick with the Saturday ball game, and, and uh, um, we've already started our week, and we're underway. <laughs> KJ, I don't know if you're a hoops fan, but Jason Kidd of the Mavericks did the same thing with the Warriors last year in the playoffs, where it was just like, look. We don't even belong in this series. I don't even know why we're arriving. We got no chance to beat this team. What's Pete Carroll actually doing here? I'm hoping this is a case of using reverse psychology. That's that's the best thing that I can think of because he's sounding very defeated. He's sounding very down. But I do believe that this is the case of hopefully reverse psychology. And um, he, this man is a competitor. He's the most ultimate competitor I ever met. He's optimistic. He's positive. And so... I do believe he's going to find a way to get these guys going. Regardless of the outcome with the Seahawks, with this team, you got first-time Geno Smith as quarterback playing in his first playoff game. You got about six rookies out there playing their first playoff game. The experience alone is going to propel this team to new heights. You get these guys, you get a taste of this playoff football, get a taste of everyone at the house watching us play. And just for these guys to get this experience, I do believe that it will build them to something special going into the future. Geno Smith as quarterback, is he the QB of the future? Is he Mr. Right, or is he just Mr. Right now? Oh, that's a good question. I do <laughs> believe, yeah, that's, I'm telling you, especially with these quarterbacks in this draft now, Seahawks have the number five pick. A lot of talk has been talked about on um, C.J. Stroud. When I look at Geno, the man is a pro bowler. He broke a Seahawks record last week. He broke Russell Wilson's passing record, number one in QBR. The name of the game is when you play well, you get paid well. And so I do believe that 
he's earned himself a two to three year deal. Hey, Gino, you know, we love what you did. We see you, you know, being a quarterback of this team for the future. But also, let's be transparent. There's some good young quarterbacks coming up. You go into your 11th season. We still may, we're still going to draft a quarterback for our future. But as of now, you are the guy that can lead it. We don't want to throw a rookie quarterback out there with this roster that we have right now. So he is Mr. Right Now. And I do believe that the Seahawks are going to find a way to extend him for about two to three years. KJ, you're a defensive player. I'm interested in your take here uh, because th- there's one thing that Brock Purdy, I guess two things in this game that he's never done. He's pl- never played a playoff game, and he's never played a team twice. So um, he's been fantastic. There's no way around that. But if it, you as a defensive player, now having played him before and knowing he's still young, you, you would approach that game and that matchup how? I would approach it as a defensive coordinator differently. I would. You have a rookie quarterback, first time. The elements are going to be bad. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be wet. If I line up as a defense and do the same thing that Brock Purdy has seen on film, then I'm doing my team a disservice. If I come out and run the same quarters, you know, three, four stuff that we run multiple times of game, this young kid is going to figure this out. So what I got to do is I got to throw this man some curveballs. I got to bring a pressure that he's never seen. I got to go either to a zero blitz where there's no safety in the middle of the field. I'm going to go for it and get this quarterback rattled, get this quarterback off the spot. He's surrounded by plenty of weapons, but you got to find ways throughout the game to. I got to give this man something different that he's never seen before, and so I'm really looking forward to Clint Hurt really trying to rattle this quarterback, giving him new looks. Because if you get out there and do the same thing that he's seen the first the first matchup, Kyle Shanahan is going to put him in position to be successful. So it's going to be another explosive play. You mentioned the weather, and if it is foul weather here, if it's a sloppy track, is that something that can be an equalizer? Does that give hope to a heavy underdog? Are are the Seahawks hoping for a sloppy track in order to try to equalize the footing, so to speak? No, yeah, we don't. We don't need. We don't need a sloppy track. We don't need perfect weather. We. It is what it is. I know that when we step foot on the football field, both teams are going to have to feel the elements. They're going to have to feel the weather. It's a matter of which team is the most prepared, which one comes out with the proper cleats, the right gloves. I hope everyone takes off their visors so they can see. And so the Seahawks don't need any extra special elements. They just got to go out there. Coach Carroll, we know what you want to do. We know your philosophy. These guys are going to have to grow up. You have tons of rookies on this football field. Let these dudes grow up. And so it's going to be a cool experience regardless of the outcome. But um, on paper, the, the Niners are definitely one of the best teams. Yeah, KJ, I'm hearing everything you're saying from it's it's going to rain to Pete Carroll's philosophy. You've mentioned Kenneth Walker and 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 run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And we know that the the 49ers don't usually give that up. Josh Jacobs had a good game a couple of, uh, weeks ago, and 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 that's about it. So philosophically, do do you think the Seahawks should? be trying that more, or do you think that that's just not even an option for them in this matchup? Well, there's no other option. <laughs> there's no other option. When you're, a, when you're a coach or you've done something, your entire career you've done something all season, I'm going to live by this or I'm going to lose by, lose by this. And so can you get creative? Absolutely. Can you do stuff a little different? Absolutely. But at your core, you are who you are as a team. And if you just get outmanned and outmatched, then those are the results you're going to live with. You can't go come out there and expect to throw this ball 40 to 50 times and think you're going to win the game. That's, that goes against everything in his DNA. And so I need my defense to step up. I need the offense to step up. It's going to take a, a team effort. And so any given Saturday in this situation, anything can happen. And so I'm really looking forward to the play calling on both offense and defense to see what can we do differently to get these, to get these um, Niners teams off track. Are you still sensing that this is a big time rivalry from the Seattle side? I know Niner fans remember the Richard Sherman and you know Turkey on the fifty, and then the playoff loss to Seattle. Do the Seahawks still see this in that same vein? It's not even close. No, absolutely not. Just what we experienced in twenty twelve to twenty fifteen is something that would go down in history books as one of the greatest times in football. You just talk about the players that you guys had with Frank Gore and. Uh, Navarro Bowman, Justin Smith, just the list goes on with what you guys had. And we had a legendary defense ourselves with Legion of Boom. And so 
these guys are coming. I, I do believe that um, and maybe in the future you can come back to it, but absolutely not. We I lived through history and just how special that time was, the NFC Championship, seeing the, the 49ers go to the Super Bowl the year before. We go to back-to-back Super Bowls, so two talented teams, two talented coaches, but right now it's, it's not there yet. K.J. Wright, former Seahawk, member of the LOB on 95.7 The Game. Great to have your thoughts this week, K.J. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.